DIY Pulse Oximeter General Pulse Oximeter Principles As of July 2020, the world is confused with COVID-19. The deterioration of pneumonia can be detected with a pulse oximeter, but the price is rising due to lack of shortage. Therefore, I have developed DIY pulse oximeter that can be made with cheap and general parts and a 3D printer. The background video shows the real-time values which received by USB serial communication. In this video, I will introduce the operating principle of a general pulse oximeter as a basic knowledge. Ok, let's get started. Pulse oximeter is a device that measures pulse and oxygen. Oxyhemoglobin HbO2, seems red, and reduced hemoglobin RHB, seems dark. It's the absorption spectra of HbO2 and RHB. In the red color, 660 nanometers, you can see that the absorption coefficient of RHB is one order higher than that of HbO2. As shown in this figure, absorption coefficient of hemoglobin differ depending on the presence or absence of oxygen, the ratio of HbO2 and RHB known as SPO2 can be obtained by comparing the absorption coefficients of the two colors such as red 660 nanometers and infrared 940 nanometers. Incident light on the finger is absorbed by cells, veins, and arteries. Attenuated light will be output as the transmitted light. If we don't move our muscle, Dynamic composition is only our blood flow. Of these, only our artery thickness changes according to the pulse. Therefore, the transmitted light through our finger is composed of the DC component which attenuated by each composition, and the AC component which changes with time due to the pulsation of the artery. Photo detector output is proportional to the transmitted light. The AC-DC ratio R for red, 660 nanometers, and infrared, 940 nanometers, shown in the following equation is correlated with SPO2. This graph shows the relationship between the AC-DC ratio R for red, 660 nanometers, and infrared, 940 nanometers, and SPO2. SPO2 can be obtained by measuring the transmitted light of red and infrared, and extracting the each AC component amplitude and DC component. Its General Pulse Oximeter Schematic The pulse oximeter schematic is simple. It consists of LED drive circuits, a transmitted light receiving and amplifying circuit, and a DC that converts the received light signal into a digital signal, and a DAC that feeds back to the gain of the received light signal amplifier. Flash the red and IR LEDs alternately, and measure the transmitted light intensity of them with a photo detector. Let's consider the required ADC resolution. The intensity of transmitted light varies greatly depending on the thickness of your finger and the pressure of the clip. To avoid ADC over range, adjust gain to operate near the center of the ADC range. At this time, the effective resolution become half, so actual resolution requires one bit more. In general, the ratio of the AC component to the DC component of the received light signal that passes through your finger is about 2 one hundredths. To calculate SPO2, about two significant digits of AC component are required. Therefore, 
The resolution required for ADC is at least 14 bits as shown. The ADC of Arduino is 10 bit, and the ADC of PIC is 10 to 12 bit, so these ADCs are useless. If you use these microcontroller, additional high resolution ADC is required. It's an example of the pulse oximeter calculation flow. Measure the transmitted light of R and red. Calculates the max per minute values of transmitted light for extraction of AC and DC components. Determine if it is the end of the period. If it's not at the end of the period, return to transmitted light measurement. If it's the end of the period, calculate HR and SPO2. Reset the max per minute values. Return to transmitted light measurement. Finally, I show an example of period check. This graph is an example of transmitted light. The blue line is an example of transmitted light beta. The AC component of the transmitted light is inversely proportional to the thickness of the artery, blood flow. By the way, the upside down version of this wave is called as pulse wave form. We will define the unique arbitrary point of this periodic wave form as the end of the period. Since the DC component of beta is constant as steady state, the average value of one period of its derivative is zero. The green line is the result of calculating the difference delta beta from the previous measurement value instead of the derivative. Because delta beta has a correlation with the derivative, it has a positive value when beta is monotonically increasing and a negative value when beta is monotonically decreasing. Beta has a steep slope when decreasing, and delta beta has a negative peak. At this time, the left ventricle contracts, and the artery changes from the contracted state to the expanded state. The orange line is the result of calculating the moving average from the past 8 points of delta beta to reduce noise. The orange line value changes from positive to negative only once in one period, so this time can be defined as the end of the period. The discrimination of positive slash negative change can be easily implemented in the program. This is the operating principle of a general pulse oximeter. Availability of high resolution ADC, DAC, and variable gain amplifiers is a bit poor. This DIY pulse oximeter not use these parts. For more information, please see the description of this video. Thank you for watching. I would be happy if you could share this video. Also, please like and subscribe.